Yo, what is up everybody? Today I'll be showing you guys how to sync and timer map perfectly on After Effects. And I know a ton of you guys still want to see some iPhone tutorials. And I actually made a second channel that will be completely dedicated to iPhone tutorials. The channel name is More Alex, and it will be linked down in the description. I already have a tutorial out right now and that is how to mask on iPhone. And because it's going to be so dedicated towards tutorials on that channel, I will literally do any tutorial you guys ask for. So go check out that channel right after this video. And also, if you guys learn anything or enjoy the video at all, make sure you leave a like and subscribe because they both really help me out. Now let's get into the video. And although this video is dedicated towards syncing and timer mapping, After Effects can be pretty confusing at the start. So I'm just going to show you guys a few basics to know when you're getting started. So for me, I get all of my songs from SoundCloud. And I use SoundCloud because majority of the songs are non-copyright. And that is like one of the hardest things to get by with YouTube. So go browse SoundCloud. There's like so many songs, so much variety on this app. So you can go and find a song that you like. All right, so I think I found my song right here, and this is the part that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to use that part right there, and I'm going to leave a link to this song down below in the description if you guys want to use it. And basically how you download this is you open up a new tab, and you type in SoundCloud Downloader, and then you can click on this first one, Download SoundCloud to MP3. And it basically pulls you up to here, and you basically copy the URL and paste it in and press download on it and it'll bring up this page right here don't click on anything else just click on download track and it'll basically just put it right here and now you can go and open up After Effects and then it'll bring up this page right here it'll show you all your projects and stuff just go ahead and press new project new composition and basically just copy my settings if you want to 1920 by 1080 always edit in 24 fps it just it just looks the best and make sure your duration isn't too short because you can always trim it down in the edit so just make sure it's nothing too short i'm just set at a minute and 44 seconds i don't know why but anyways that should work and press ok on it and it brings you to this screen just a black screen and basically here is where you can either drag and drop your song right there or you can open up your downloads your download file and it should be right at the top of your download file and once again you can just drag and drop it in and then you wait a second and it'll be right there now press ll and pressing ll will basically just bring up this right here and then let's go to the part where the beat drop is so it sounds like it's right about there and basically you press this mountain button right here and zoom in all the way and basically these are the frequencies and you can tell that there's a beat here because you can see the frequencies get a lot higher and you always want to go one before the beat and then it's right there and now you can zoom out and press on the song press ll again to keep it more organized and now you can open up your folder with your clips or whatever and once again adding in your clips is super easy as well you can just drag and drop them in and you can just zoom out and it'll be right here and then syncing your clip is super, super easy. You literally go to your uh, marker right here. If I didn't explain how to add the marker, you just press this button right here and it'll go right onto the thing and you can always move it around, but just keep it there. Oh, and if you accidentally move it around and you forget your place, press Control Z and it will undo what you just did. That works for anything. Control Z is undoing. And then you can just move your clip around and I always put my clip or put my beat on right there. So like right before the shot, just like that. And then you can keep the audio or you don't have to keep the audio. I usually take it off and then add sound effects later. All right, now let's go to like the start of your clip or the start of your song or wherever you want it. I'm personally going to start my clip right there. And that should be good for now. You just split your clip where you want it. And then let's go to your shot. And let's go to here. And let's split this. If you guys do not know how to split, let's go to edit. And let's go to keyboard shortcuts. And this is basically just going to bring up all your shortcuts. Right now, I have my split layer as my up arrow. It's just super quick and convenient. Basically, what you can do is you can just click on any button you want. Personally, I suggest doing like the cut, the cut and the split on the up and down arrow. The cut is basically just delete and the split is just splitting the clip. This is what I suggest having it as. 
And basically you can assign that real quick and then you press OK and you can X out of it. Now make sure you have your clip selected right here and press the up arrow on it. And now that's split. And now let's go to the next beat in the song. So it sounds right about there. Let's press LL on that and let's zoom in all the way once again. And as you can see, the frequencies go one before the frequency. I think this would be pretty good because in my opinion, it always looks better having it one frame before than one frame after. So don't worry about it being one frame off. Let's put the clip again on that second uh, marker right there. And a quick way to switch between markers and markers, you can press one, two, and those are basically the, the markers. And now if you assign your cut button to your down arrow, this is where you can use that. Or if you did not do that yet, you can simply go to edit and cut. And now let's go to control, alt, T. Once again, that's control, alt, T. Press them all at the same time and it'll bring up this. And basically you're gonna add one keyframe there and you can basically just add it right here. And then you go to the end of your clip, one frame in, add another keyframe, and basically press this arrow right here, and we're gonna get rid of that one. And now you're gonna zoom out all the way, and there's gonna be a hidden keyframe right here. And once again, you can delete that. If you do not see this keyframe, you have to move your clip all the way over until you can see it. Because half the time it's just sometimes hidden because your project is too close to the, uh, to the start. And we can go to this second keyframe, and you can actually move it to where you want it to be. And I'm actually gonna move it to right at the end where I pull out the map. And then we could highlight both of these and press F9. I'm pretty sure if you're on a 60% keyboard, it should be Fn plus nine. Or once again, you can go to uh, edit keyboard shortcuts and then set keyframe. You can edit that to whatever button you want. I just keep mine on F9. Now, what you have to do is you have to have at least one keyframe highlighted and you press this button right here. That's the graph editor. And you could do something and basically just mess with these. If they disappear, press on the squares and just mess with this a little bit. And then in order to make it a little bit sharper, have the velocity a little sharper, hold on one of the circles, hold shift as well and move it over. If you don't do that, it'll like go like that but basically if it's here and I hold shift it'll straighten out like like that and then go to your clip right here and where you see this first square out of the four you're gonna press that twice and that's basically get, going to enable frame blending that's basically gonna make your clip just a lot more smooth and also another way of doing velocity is doing a slow fast slow right now this is just slow and basically you can hold down on this one and it basically goes fast, here's the slow, and then it speeds back up. Like that. Personally, I like the way that looks for this song, so I'm gonna do that. And let's also add a little bit of velocity before the clip, because that always looks nice. I'm going to go to where I pull up my shotgun, right about there. We're gonna press the up arrow, or whatever you put as your cut. You're gonna go Control alt t once again, that's Control plus alt plus t And you're gonna add the same thing, the keyframe there, go to the end, one frame in keyframe gonna go over delete that one gonna go over one two three delete that as well and then highlight both of those f9 or whatever button you have that on basically just turns the keyframes into that go to graph editor and let's do something this something like this would probably look the best just like that so that looks good and now let's add in one cinematic once again just drag and drop super easy and it should be at the start right there and basically let's just find the next beat where we want the cinematic to end so it sounds like right about there let's press ll on it let's zoom in looks right about there let's add a keyframe and then let's listen to make sure yep ll again to keep it organized and basically don't even worry about where your cinematic is right now we can basically just split it and delete it where it is and just keep it inside the keyframes even though that looks literally like nothing we're gonna change that in one second so let's go control alt t that's how you add your timer mapping add your keyframe and then one at the start take it out 
take it out and now you're here then let's highlight and then let's go to this first one and now using this scrolling to the left and to the right we can move this to where we want it to be so i'm gonna move mine right there and then we got to do the same thing for this one i think i'm gonna go right there and now let's highlight both of these f9 highlight one graph editor and personally on most of my cinematics i do a slow fast slow so something like that something like that and trust me for cinematics you always want to have frame blending on without frame blending this is what it looks like you can see where just those frames look a bit like low if you enable frame blending this is what it looks like you can just see how much smoother it looks uh, and then i always suggest when you're doing 24 fps to add rsmb and you do need a plugin for rsmb it's really easy to get you just look up how to get rsmb on after effects 2020 on youtube and pretty much any tutorial should work it's super easy and once you have that downloaded you have to restart after effects and then once you have it back up open your project and press Control alt y this is going to add an adjustment layer and this is basically going to go over your clip or whatever and type in rsmb and it'll be right here rsmb don't worry about rsmb pro or rc pro vectors all you need is rsmb make sure you have your adjustment layer selected double click rsmb and change this to 0.3 and then when you're pre-rendering make sure you have this turned off otherwise literally every single time you'll get this error and literally i struggled with this for like two days i don't even know what was happening and all I had to do was press that. See, that'll play, but enable this. It, it just, it, it won't play. And now we're done with that pretty much, but don't skip this step because it's actually super important. Let's go to where you want to start your clip. Let's say I want to start my clip right here. I'm going to press B. And let's say I want to add my thing right there. Press N. So N and B, super useful. B is on the left and is on the right. And now what we gotta do is we gotta click on an adjustment layer and let's go control A, it'll highlight everything. Right click, pre-compose, and you can just name this whatever. I, I usually just do test, so that's fine. Then press okay on it. And then basically this is where you're gonna render from. And, but before you do any rendering, you need to add your RSMB. So you need to click on your adjust miller, press control C, control copy, basically that's what it does, and control V, which is paste, and that'll just add in your adjust miller. And you only need to do this for your color correction or your RSMB, whatever you're doing. And then right here is where you can click in your RSMB. Alright, and now that you're done, you can go to file, export, add to render queue, and basically this is what I do for my settings, except click click on use comps frame rate. And then for the output, I do an AVI file. This will be a really big file, except I'm going to show you guys how to compress this file into a super small file. And then the rest of this should work. Press OK on it. And basically just press render on it. All right, now for compressing the files, you're going to need to download something called Handbrake. And basically, just look up on YouTube how to download Handbrake. It'll be super easy. Probably just like a one-minute tutorial. Super easy. And basically, once you have that downloaded, just extract that to your desktop or whatever. Double-click on it. And basically, this is where you can just drop your video in right here. And then you just press Start and Code. And basically, just like that, it's done. And once again, you can open up this. And let's look up Tutorial. And it'll be right here. Open File Location and it'll be right here. And if you guys actually look at the file sizes, this one, the one that we just got from Handbrake, is only nine megabytes. And the one before, that is the AVI file that we got straight from After Effects, is 1.2 gigabytes. So it's a lot smaller, a lot more compressed. This is what the one gigabyte one looks like. This is what the nine megabyte one looks like. Literally no difference. So I 100% suggest using Handbrake. 
All right, and just like that, you guys made your first After Effects edit. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything from this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe because they both really helped me out. Also, let me know if you guys want to see any more After Effects tutorials. For example, I could do masking, I could do some more effects, or just anything you guys would want to see. Also, make sure you go subscribe to my second channel as I will be doing literally any tutorial you guys ask for. And yeah, I'm out. Peace.